Hey guys, Culture here. Today we're going to talk about anonymity on the internet. More specifically, we'll look at the pros and cons of anonymity by looking to 4chan for the best examples. I warn you all up front, this episode will be graphic and touch on a lot of disturbing themes. Oh, here we go. I knew I was here for a reason. This, this is my purpose on this show. Nay, in life, my years of trawling memes in the darkest corners of the internet will finally pay off. We're in my world now, baby! I am genuinely scared. People like Crash thrive off of anonymity. Hiding your identity means you can do all sorts of things you would never do if you were held accountable. That can be fun, like performing in a play and taking on the guise of a completely different character. Or it can be menacing, like putting on a balaclava and robbing the local 7-Eleven. Humans are primed to identify people and build associations with them. So-and-so is reliable, but lies about petty things. This other guy is reckless with other people's belongings, but he's a great listener. Anonymity is powerful because it acts like a reset button, clearing away all the old associations and leaving you to act as you are in the moment. Masquerade balls evolved out of this desire for anonymous rebellion. Before Lent began, a period of abstinence from indulgence, Christians would get their rocks off during the carnival season. They'd eat, drink, and get frisky, all while hiding their identities behind masks. Admit it, the idea of getting all gussied up and going to a fancy party just so you can steal away into one of the back rooms with another guest is pretty exciting. Culture, I'm not used to hearing you speak like this. It's having some kind of effect on me. Thank you. God, there are cameras rolling. I completely agree. Wink. Wow. My point is, people love anonymity because it means there are no consequences for their actions. It's like playing Ding Dong Ditch or yelling at people out the window of your car as you drive past. There's very little risk of someone catching you and, frankly, beating the crap out of you for acting obnoxious. So the desire for anonymity is inherently human. But now, let's add to this a brand new tool that allows you to be truly anonymous, to act as you wish with virtually zero risk of being punished. The internet. On the internet, you are as anonymous as you like to be, and you have a physical distance from the people you annoy. You might have an online reputation attached to your username, or you might be easily identifiable if you're using a profile that gives you personal details, like Facebook or Instagram. But if you want to, it's quite easy to make an alternate account with mostly fake details and have your fun insulting people, harassing forums, and spamming chats. You really should try it sometime. The feeling you get from ripping apart other people's work and opinions while looking over your gut at the computer screen just can't be beat. Acting like a keyboard warrior and lambasting people is one thing, but the power of being anonymous on the internet goes much further than that. And perhaps the best petri dish of anonymous scum we can examine inhabit the image boards of 4chan. For those of you who are uninitiated, 4chan is an image-based forum where people gather to share memes, discuss pop culture, and tell stories. If you're watching this video, you probably already have many preconceptions about 4chan. Well... Everything you just thought of is probably accurate, but I'll try to explain from the ground up what makes 4chan different from something like Reddit or Tumblr. Firstly, 4chan doesn't require you to make an account or register a username to post there. You can access the site and immediately begin posting whatever pictures and threads you want under any name you like. And of course, if you choose not to pick a username, your name defaults to anonymous. Your level of accountability on 4chan is practically zero unless you purposely post personal details. Secondly, 4chan has almost no restrictions on what you can post there. Technically, you're not allowed to post anything that violates US law, but in practice, these things are posted all the time and only removed when moderators catch wind of them. Porn of all different types, from the benign to the most niche of fetishes, is all over the site. At least 12 of the site's 63 boards are dedicated to porn with sexual content leaking into many of the other boards as well. Wow, that sounds absolutely awful. Hey, look, I'm not one to judge, but there's more worrying content on there too. On 4chan's most infamous board, the Random or B board, the degeneracy of the site's visitors gets even more concentrated. Casual racism, sexism, and general intolerance is the norm. But that could all be excused as an in-joke. What can't be excused are the images of animal abuse, snuff photos, and child pornography that make their way onto the boards. Like I said, a lot of this stuff gets removed by the mods, but not before it's already reached the 700,000 or so daily visitors to the site. The only other board to rival B is the politics or poll board. On poll, the controversy not only stems from the polarized, hate-mongering discourse, but also from the real-life ramifications of these discussions. But we'll get to those later. The last unique trait of 4chan is that posts expire after a relatively short amount of time. Essentially, if your post hasn't gotten any comments in a while, it gets dropped off and replaced by the next new post. But if people like your thread and want to keep it alive, they'll comment on it and give it a bump. 
This method of content sharing means that only the most popular threads are available at any given time, and that threads are constantly changing to reflect new trends. You're viewing the internet zeitgeist every time you log on to 4chan. Two questions. One, what the hell is a zeitgeist? And two, how do I become one with 4chan? Like, I want to do some Neo-level shit where I actually enter 4chan and then eat all of the blue pills to stay there forever. Look, the appeal of 4chan is obvious. It's all that anonymous fun that we talked about earlier. But there are also some genuinely good sides to this anonymity. A lot of people who feel marginalized in greater society use anonymous sites like 4chan as an outlet for their real person. Personalities. In public, they wear a mask, but on forums specifically dedicated to their interests, they're allowed to be themselves. The most obvious example here would be closeted members of the LGBT community, but it doesn't have to pertain to sexuality. There's this board for discussing weapons, everything from nunchucks to grenades to tanks and so on. If you lived in a very left-leaning, anti-gun community, and you were interested in guns purely for recreational purposes, a site like 4chan might seem like your only outlet. My point is, 4chan is a refuge from societal norms, and societal norms are different wherever you live. The other big plus to anonymity on 4chan is that everyone is made equal. You can't earn karma or upvotes on 4chan. If your thread becomes popular, no one knows it was you who made it, and it will eventually be deleted forever anyway. We live in a culture where people are fame and popularity obsessed. TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch. YouTube. I mean, not that we're obsessed with popularity. We couldn't care less what anyone else thinks. We just want to deliver the best content possible. Seriously though, like, comment, and subscribe! 4chan bucks the trend of social media. The creator doesn't matter at all, only their creation. After all, 4chan is where we got some of the most classic memes. Lolcats, rickrolling, rage faces, and so on. It's fun when the creations are good, but things can turn dark very quickly when the creations are bad. As I mentioned earlier, 4chan is a refuge from societal norms, but societal norms exist for a reason. On the more innocent end of the scale, people on 4chan have organized mass trolls on different communities, including Tumblr and Fox News. One of the most, ah, uh, creative occurred back in 2005, when 4chan users made profiles for the kids game Habbo Hotel. Every 4chan user would make their character a black man with an afro in a suit, and they would then block off certain features of the game and make swastika formations. A bit offensive, yeah, but no real harm done. How could you say that, Kilcher? I was horny for Habbo Hotel in 2005 when the Chatters invaded! I wasted so much time hoping that they would get out of the way of the pool. I'll never get that peaceful relaxation back! Yeah, like I said, no real harm done. More serious are the numerous threats that have been posted on 4chan, which have led to real-life investigations, including school shootings and pipe bombings. In 2006, user Jake Brahm threatened to bomb some NFL games. When he was arrested, he claimed that he was just joking. He didn't expect anyone to take them seriously. Jokes on him, though, he had to pay $26,000 in restitution fees. That's a little reminder to you folks. Just because you seem anonymous online, doesn't mean the feds can't track you down if they really want. 4chan has also had its fair share of political involvement, either hacking the accounts of politicians or altering online polls. In 2008, a B user hacked Sarah Palin's email account and leaked the password. And in the 2016 presidential election, many alt-right 4chan users extensively cyberbullied opponents of Donald Trump, with even offline supporters adopting the Pepe meme as a symbol. Oh, it's even better than that. Pepe the Frog is the modern-day avatar of an ancient Egyptian deity known as Kek who was accidentally resurrected by online image boards. It's the second coming of Kek! Kneel before him! Terrifying. I could go on and on about the exploits of 4chan users. Project Chanology, Gamergate, The Fappening, and of course, the creation of the online hacker group Anonymous. While there is a lot of good that being anonymous on the internet can do, it seems like the evidence is overwhelming. Given the chance to shirk responsibility for their actions, people tend to do less than savory things. When you look at it that way, it's not hard to see why countries like China and Russia have tried to put a stop to internet anonymity. In 2017, both countries cracked down on VPN services, forcing them to provide the details of their customers to their respective governments. That's in addition to other censorship measures, including blocking access to certain websites and disallowing certain kinds of speech online. Thanks to my extensive reading of the poll board on 4chan, I know exactly what to call the governments of China and Russia. It starts with an F. Fascists? Oh, that works too. 
There's another F word I saw a lot more on 4chan than that. I don't agree with censorship in almost any form. It takes away our freedom. But if we're not going to censor the internet, then how do we stop the worst in people from coming out online? If we allow people to be anonymous, how do we keep them accountable for their actions? I believe I might have the answer. Hit me with culture. Whatever we have to do, I'm up for it. I want the power to stay anonymous online. I want people to have a safe haven to explore their interests. And I want people to be able to question the status quo in a safe space. So for that, I'll do anything. We have to teach people the merits of personal responsibility. Come on, I'm serious. We shouldn't have to rely on laws and censors to regulate our behavior. We need to strengthen people's own judgment of right and wrong. If you shouldn't bully people in real life, you shouldn't bully them online. If there's certain language you would never use in public, you shouldn't use it online. You should know from the feeling of guilt or shame when you do something wrong that just because you won't get punished for it, that doesn't mean it's acceptable behavior. Maybe I'm naive here, but if we all hold ourselves to a higher standards as individuals, then we'll improve as a society as well. It's fun and genuinely beneficial to sometimes be anonymous online. Let's not ruin that. See you all soon.